Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, the 6th of July, 2021, and this is the black man who reads aloud, Joe Hall, the black blogger. I'm continuing my journey into the um, Writers Project, uh, Federal Writers Project that occurred between 1936 through 1938. Um, as a result of the Workers' Progress Administration uh, contracting researchers to go down south and to speak to former uh, African American ancestors who may have been or were held in slavery. Remember that these are their words, and of course, there was still some hesitancy for many of our ancestors to give the actual truth to strangers. Today we are reading the words of Aunt Margaret Bryant, Morrell's Inlet, South Carolina, Georgetown County, South Carolina. How are you, Aunt Margaret? Missy, I ain't with, I ain't with. Aunt Margaret, you've been a, here a long time. How old are you? I can't tell you my age, no way in the world. When, when, when freedom comes, I've been here, not big enough for work for the Reb, but I've been here Reb time. Been big enough to know when Yankee gunboats come to Watts, Watsaw. Whole gang of Yankees come to the house and didn't do a thing but catch a gang of fowl and gone on. And tell the people, meaning the slaves, to take the house and go in and get whatever you want. The Obertsair saw the doctor whistle to the gate and, and, and wave, wave him back. And then the doctor know the Yankee been there and he gone on to the creek house and get all the gold and thing out of the house and gone. Marry and tell freedom, then he come back. Yankee come in that night, moon moonshine like a day. Stay in the doctor's house that night. Morning come take a gang of fowl and gone on. Visitor. Aunt uh, Margaret, what was your name before you were married? Margaret. Margaret one, brother and sister. I, I, I ain't one, but w w when I come here, ain't me the aunt and uncle, none. Me and my brother Michael were twin. I ain't me none when I come here, all been sell. Me and my ma, one here, married one. Husband title, husband Nisha, been one. Number one carpenter, give him that name, Michael One, and he been that name. Born Sandy Island, been to landing to Watsaw, where gunboat come. Just a sneaky long boat white, hab a red chimney. Didn't try, didn't try to carry we off. Tell him go and help yourself. Been after the buckra. I, I sees my mind die with some bush. They call indigo and black walnut bark. Big old pen for the sheep foals. My pa's sister Rita one had that job. Nurse the children, children house. One woman nurse all, all the children while they in the field, rice field. All size children. Get the gy gypsy weed. Beat them up for worm. Give them when the moon change. Take a bucket and follow them and tell a doctor how much a worm that one make and that one and then count them. When the moon change, do that. I have one born with, with call, lossy call. Rat carrier ain't here. He see nothing. Children born feet foremost. See them on too. Talk of children. Put down a switch, put you in bullpen, have, ha, have them a place can't see you, hand before you, can't turn around in there, left you in there till morning, give you 50 lashes and send you to work. You ain't done that task, men and women lick. Couldn't manage my ma, Obashir wanted to lick me at ma, ma Mary once said, I'm going to drown myself. I, I, I done my work. 
before I take a lick. Rather drowny myself. Obashir gone tell a doctor. Tie up long rope. Right to Sandy Island. Man hold rope. Go on. Jump in the river. So doctor say, you too good labor for drown. Take them to watch y'all. Me and, me and she and man what paddle the boat. Bring her to weave. Two women for car. Card. Two spin. Ma whop them off. Sail the shackle through there. Poor Buckler come here and buy cloth for Ma. By three and four yards. Ma sell that. Have to weave day and night to make that little cloth to please Obershear. Come big daytime, little children with, with, with mama. And tell them on to the weaving house. Don't have money for pay. Bring hog and such like as, they, as that to pay. You know Ma, Ma's Elliot's age? Me and Ma's Elliot su suck together. Me and Ma's Elliot and my brother Michael. My ma fatter mixed with uh, the engine. Son Larry Aiken stay, ch stay Charlton. Just as clean. S see him that one time? Come to Charleston, bring doctor two horses. Given by Margaret Bryant. No age. Merrill's Inlet, South Carolina. And finally, the, the last piece is from Sylvania Burrell, ex-slave, 83 years old, Winsboro, South Carolina. Our preacher, Beatty, told me that you wanted to see, see me today. I walked three miles this morning before the sun gets hot, so it got hot to this house. This house is my granddaughter's house, Willie Card, where her husband worked down to the cotton mill. He made good money and take good care of her. Bless the Lord, I say. My mom in slavery time was Captain Tom Still. He had a big plantation down down there on Jackson Creek. His mistress' name was Mary Ann, though she wasn't his first wife, just his second wife, and a widow when she captivated him. You know, widows is like that any, anyhow, because they, they done experience wives with men and wraps them around their little fingers and get them under their thumb for the men knows what Going to, what going on? Young girls have a poor chance against a young widow like uh, Miss Mary Ann was. Her had troubles with Moss Tom after he after her gets him. I tell you, but maybe best not to tell that right now, anyways. Moss Tom had four children by his first wife. Uh, they was John, Sam, Henrietta, and I can't remember the name of the other one, at least right now. They teach me to call children three years old, young Mars, and say Missy. They whip you if you dare ever say old Mars or old Missy. That robbed them. My pappy named Sam, my mother named Mary. My pappy did not live on the same place as mother. He was a slave of the Hamiltons, and he'd get a pass sometimes to come and be with her, not often. Grandmammy named, named Easter. And she belonged to our Miss Tom Steele, too. We lived in a log cabin with a stick chimney. One time, the sticks caught a fire and burned a big hole in the back of the chimney in cold winter time with the wind blowing, and that house was filled with fire sparks. Ask and smoke for weeds before they tore down, tore that chimney down and built another just like the old one. The bed was nailed down to the side of the wall. How many rooms? Just one room. Never seen any money. How many slaves? So many you couldn't count them. There was plenty to eat such as it was, but in the summertime, before us get there to eat, the flies would be all over the food and some were swimming in the gravy and milk pots. Mars laughed out there and say it made us fat. They sell one of mother's chillin in once and when she take on and cry about it, Ma say, stop, stop that sniffling there if you don't want to get a whipping. She grieved and cried night about it, about it. Clothes, yes sir, us half naked all the time. Grown boys went round barefooted and in their shirt tails all this summer. 
Boss was a rich man. For Christmas, they would kill 30 hogs, and after Christmas, 30 more hogs. He had a big gin house and sheep and goats, cows, mules, horses, turkeys, geese, and a stallion. I remember his name, Stocking the Foot. Us little niggas were scared to death of that stallion. Mothers used to say to children to quiet, then better hush, Stocking Foot will get you and tramp you down. Any child would get quiet at that. Old Moss was the daddy of some mulatto children. The relations with their, their mothers of these children is what gives so much grief to mistress. The neighbors would talk about it and he would sell all them children away from their mothers to a traitor. My mistress would cry about that. Our doctor was old Moss' son-in-law, Dr. Martin. I seen him cup a man once. He was a good doctor. He gives slaves castor oil, bleed them sometimes and make them take pills. Us looked for the Yankees on that place like us look now for the Savior and the host of angels at the second coming. They come one day in February, they took everything terrible off the plantation and burnt the big house, the stables, barns, gin house, and they left the slave houses. After the war, I married Osborne Burrell and live on the, the, on the Tom Jordan place. I was the mother of 12 children, just three living now, and I lives with the Mills family three miles above town. My son Willie got killed at the DuPont powder plant in Hopewell, Virginia during the World War. This house you setting in belongs to Charlie Cardwell. He married my granddaughter Willie B. She's 23 years old. Young Ma Sam still got killed in the Civil War. Old Ma live on. I went to see him in his last days and I sat by him and kept the flies off, 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 off while there. I see the lines of Saul have played, plowed on that old face and I remembered he had been a captain on a horse back in the war. It come into my remembrance the, the song of Moses, the Lord had triumphed gloriously and the horse and his rider had been thrown into the sea. You've been good to listen. This is the first time I get to speak my mind like this morning. All the people seem running here and yonder after this and that. There's a, another old slave. I'm I, I going to bring him down here Saturday to talk to you again. And that's the end of the two stories for today. Tuesday, July the 6th, 2021, as we continue to journey back on the writer's Federal Writers Project about the stories of our ancestors held in bondage. Have a great day.